Hello, hello, this is Father Adam greeting you on this Sunday, this Corpus Christi Sunday. With a big smile and lots of love this Sunday for you with some good news that I know you can use in your own daily life. Traditionally on Corpus Christi, which means the body of Christ, when we celebrate the presence, the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, in the bread, the host, in Holy Communion, that Jesus is substantially present, not just symbolically, that it's really Jesus. Uh, we would take Jesus out in a procession in the monstrance. That's that golden structure that contains the white host in the middle out into the streets to show Jesus off in the Blessed Sacrament. But every day in our life should be Corpus Christi. Every day should be a day when we show Jesus off in his body, which is each and every one of us, because you and I are the body of Christ. So every day should be a Corpus Christi. When people see us, they should see Jesus. When people come in contact with us, they should come in contact with Jesus in our smiles, in the way we carry ourselves. Unfortunately, many times we are not walking monstrances, but we are many times walking monsters. So when people come in contact with you, do they behold a walking monstrance or a walking monster? Do they want to run away when they see you or are they drawn to you? Are you inviting, non-judgmental, compassionate, loving, forgiving, merciful? Do you have the heart of God? I will never forget in one of the parishes where I served every Friday, a group of people had adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., they would adore Jesus in the monstrance in church, in the little host in the middle, in Holy Communion. But a funeral came in, a young man 19 years old, committed suicide, and the family needed to do the funeral on the Friday that they had the adoration. And so I had to interrupt the time of adoration for this group of very religious, pious people. They called themselves the adorers of the Blessed Sacrament. I scheduled the funeral at 2 p.m., and I'm in the office, and I hear that they are with the secretary, this group of people, and they are complaining to the secretary. Father Adam has no respect for the Blessed Sacrament. How could he interrupt our time with Jesus? I couldn't take it anymore. I heard them. I opened the door. I come out and I look at them and I say, you say that you are people of prayer? Oh, yes, Father. And when they saw me, of course, come out, they said, Good morning, Father. How are you? You know, sometimes the people who will be nice to you, to your face, and then put a knife in your back. And I said, You say you are people of prayer? Oh, of course, Father. We live to pray. We live to pray, Father. I looked at them and I said, stop praying. Stop it. Stop praying. Because if your prayer does not lead you to have compassion for a family that just lost a loved one, it is not prayer. Stop it and start over. Because God is not something. God is someone. And we are to love God in other people. 
and recognize God in other people, recognize his presence and adore his presence in other people. You want to see God? It's easy to come to church and look at a little white host in the monstrance and say, oh, you're so wonderful. Mwah. Love you. But what about your husband? He's an image of God too. Do you adore God in him? Do you adore God in your wife? In your children? It's not so easy, is it? How about in your family members? Hmm? You know, people hurt us, they betray us, they do horrible things to us, and yet we are called to love them. What about your co-workers? We are called to love God in other people. You cannot love God whom you do not see if you harbor ill feelings towards the people whom you do see. God is real. God is incarnate. And we take him out into the streets on Corpus Christi to remind ourselves that God is among us, in us and in others. We are the presence of God and others are the presence of God. We are in a world that needs that presence. Are you that presence? Are you Jesus? St. Teresa of Avila, the great doctor of the church, teaches us that Jesus has no hands other than yours, no mouth other than yours. You are to be Jesus in the world. I'll never forget meeting a young man, 25 years old, in the hospital. He was trying to commit suicide. And he says to me, Father, the day that I tried to take my life, I said to myself, I will go out into the street and I will try to meet one person who will smile at me. Needless to say, he did not meet that one person. We can save a life one smile at a time. That's what I try to do. Hmm? How many people's spirits, souls have been uplifted by my smile, by the... Hello, hello. Do the same in your life. Be the walking monstrance. Be Jesus. He wants to be you. We come to receive him and then... We are called to be him. We are in church to receive Jesus, to be Jesus. We receive Holy Communion to be communion, to be community, to bring community to others. We receive him whom we want to become in the world. We receive the blood of Christ, blood in the Bible, means the very life. That's why Jews would never eat anything that contained blood, like they could never eat meat that had blood in it because blood contained life. So when Jesus gives us his blood to drink, he is giving us himself. He's giving you himself to be him in the world. It's not your blood that is flowing through you, but it's his blood. So be him, be non-judgment, be acceptance, be love. When I was in my first seminary experience uh, in Chicago, uh, I had to take a train, the L, uh, every single day to downtown Chicago, and I had to walk through these tunnels where there was a lot of homeless people begging, and a lot of others who were begging there too. And I would always walk through these tunnels trying to have my focus like this, not to look on either side. But one day, for some reason, this young woman in her 20s 
caught my attention and I was stopped right in front of her. And I look at her and she had a sign come down right in front of her that said, I am infected with the HIV virus. Please help me. And I stopped there and I always only had enough money for the bus fare and the train fare. And I said to her, you know, I don't have any money, but is there something I can do to help you? And she looked at me and said, standing up, she says, hug me, hug me. And I did this. And after a while, I hugged her, but it wasn't the same as if I had hugged her with the enthusiasm that should befall somebody that follows Christ, somebody that doesn't just follow Christ, but is Christ in the world, is his presence, is his body. I missed my chance that very day to hug Jesus right away. And from that day forward, I have been committed to never miss that chance ever again. As I hug you today and send you a big kiss today and a blessing always as I try to be his presence in your life and call you to be that presence in the life of those around you as I bless you today and always. Be a walking monstrance. Be Jesus. Be a walking monstrance, not a walking monster. God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hello.